Hello everyone. I am here with our second kind of instructional video. Um, hope everyone's doing okay with uh, the coronavirus situation. Um, I know this is a little bit stressful. I just want to say I'm really proud of all the work that you guys have done thus far in the uh, online and learning environment. I know this isn't necessarily what you signed up for for this spring semester, but you're all doing extremely well. Um, Please keep in mind that I'm always available through email or you can schedule to meet with me throughout the week through Google Hangouts if you want to have a little bit of face-to-face -face interaction about our course. Um, yeah, so the video that I'm creating right now is focused on providing a little bit of assistance with the qualitative research component of the of the CRP project that you're that you're completing with your groups right now. Um, Provided that we are in this online learning environment, you probably won't be able to get some face-to-face um, -face interaction with a lot of participants. If you plan on conducting interviews, you can still use things like FaceTime and Skype or even the new Google Hangouts feature that we've been discussing. Um, or I guess I've been discussing with myself through video. But um, a tool that I think is really useful if you plan on conducting a survey with a number of participants is Google Forms. Google Forms is an application that is available to all of us through our NAU emails, our Google accounts. And the way you get to it is just by going up to the application grid um, in the top right of the, the Google homepage. So if I click on that, it's going to pull up all of these applications and I'm just going to scroll down to the forms icon here. It's purple, it's titled forms. And if I click on that, <clears throat> it's going to give me the option to create a Google form. As you can see, I've got a couple forms um, in the making here, things I've used in the past, or I could create a new Google form. And I, this is the option I recommend for you and your crew members. Um, just because it gives you a lot of freedom in creating questions, like types of questions and stuff like that. They have some other templates here, but I'm not sure that they're the most uh, viable option for what we're looking for right now. So I recommend you click on this blank start a new form um, option. What I'm going to do right now is show you one of my previous Google Forms so that I can kind of talk about some of the features. So I'm going to click on this one here, and it's going to take me to a survey that I conducted with my fall English 105 students. Um, there's a few other responses in there that are from me just kind of messing around. But as you can see, I've got a title here for my survey. You can also change the title up here by double clicking and messing with things like that. Useful tool for letting your survey participants kind of know the general topic of your survey really quickly. Um, I also recommend like a quick description underneath that kind of says something like along the lines of what I have here. This survey is created to help our research team learn more about students at NAU and how they eat breakfast on a regular basis. Um, also, I recommend a disclaimer here just to kind of maintain an ethical approach to your qualitative research, saying something like, at any time, if you feel uncomfortable with this survey, please feel free to stop your participation. Um, this just lets people know that you are being considerate of their emotions and feelings as they engage with the types of research questions. I know that some of us are dealing with some kind of controversial topics like addiction and some people might not always be comfortable asking or answering the questions that you ask of them. So keep keep that in mind and maybe throw a disclaimer in there like this. So on to the questions. The survey that we're looking at here has four questions. This is a linear scale question, a multiple choice question, and then two short answer um, questions. So with this first question I asked on average how many days per week would you say that you eat a balanced breakfast? So I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 as the potential options. And I can edit this by clicking on the question and I can actually label my options too. So like I could say 0 days and then 7 days for Option number seven, okay. And then if we click out of this, we now have a sort of like frame of reference for our question. Sorry to click around like that, but um, so 
This tells your respondents that if they click zero, they're talking about zero days, one day, two days, three days, four days, five days, six days, seven days, right? Um, I could change the type of question by coming up here and turning it into multiple choice. I like the linear scale for this option, so I'm going to leave it. And this kind of sidebar here allows you to um, add questions or change the title of a question or things like that. I'll let you guys mess around with those things and get a little more comfortable on your own. A lot of times just messing with those other characteristics will um, teach you more than I can through saying something in this video. Here's my second question. How would you say that you usually grab breakfast in the morning? We could talk about the way that this question's formed. Maybe the word grab is a little ambiguous. Um, we could maybe change the question to say, um, where do you normally find breakfast in the morning? It depends on what types of things we're really trying to get out of our questions that we ask, right? So when we create this survey, um, we have to keep in mind what is the general or major research question that our group is trying to answer? And how can we elicit or get at some really meaningful data? How can we, pro how can we set up these questions so that when our participants answer the questions, they provide meaningful data that allow us to interpret the results in ways that provide answers to our major research questions. So I had um, one, two, three, four, five options for this question for my participants. It was either buy breakfast on campus, buy breakfast off campus, cook in the residence hall kitchen for breakfast. Maybe I could even add that in there so they understand that we're still talking about breakfast if they lost sight of what the question originally was asking. And then the fourth option is a prepackaged breakfast, food stored, or a prepackaged breakfast, food stored in your dorm room. See, even as I read that question, I'm thinking, hmm, that doesn't read very well. My participants might be confused by that response or that option for this multiple choice question. So let's consider revising it. Um, I'm not going to do that right now, but consider those things as you go over your questions. I eat worms for breakfast. Um, little unusual hopefully nobody said yes to this one a um, little bit of a side note I added that in later um, and if you wanted to add another option I would just click here and say I never eat breakfast in the morning okay so now I have one two three four five six different options for this multiple choice question and what that's going to do is and what we'll see here in this next question was with a short answer question I said in one sentence, what is the first change you would make to the breakfast options made available to on your university campus? Now, because this is a short answer question, all of the participants who take this survey are going to have a lot more freedom in the types of things that they respond with, opposed to this multiple choice question where there are six options and they have to choose the best option for their own personal um, engagement with the question. Something like this is a lot easier for a research team to interpret versus trying to, so like I could say that 67% of my sample said that they eat worms for breakfast. Let's say I had a sample of 40 and 28 of them said that. Now I can actually put some type of number on the actual number of participants who said something, right? With a question like this, all 40 of my participants in the sample will most likely write something different. And it's going to be a lot harder for me to interpret these results in a way that it, that makes sense for my audience as I write the results section of my paper. So keep those things in mind as you create your surveys for the qualitative research component. Um, what I try to do here, so if you want to try and structure a short answer question that kind of gets you results that you're looking for, you might consider something like this. If you could choose between 6 a.m., 9 a.m., or 11 a.m., which time would you choose to wake up every day? Now, is this question getting at information that I really want to learn about in terms of the breakfast habits at NAU? Maybe, maybe not. What I'd like for all of us to kind of recognize here is that the people who read this question should understand that there are only three options. But immediately, as a survey creator, you might consider, well, if there's only three options, why wouldn't I just change this to a multiple choice question? 
right? Because even though I said 6 a.m., 9 a.m., or 11 a.m. 11 a.m. in this short answer question, someone could surely still write 5 p.m. Maybe they're trying to make a joke. Maybe they didn't understand the question. Who knows? But if you provide a multiple choice question, this 6 a.m., 9 a.m., or 11 a.m. are the only options that are going to be available to the, to the participants. Another thing to notice is that you can trash a question. Eh, I didn't like this question. Let's delete it. I'm not going to do that right now, but you could do that. Um, and then you can make a question required on your form or not required. That's If it's highlighted, it's required, not required, required. And I truly recommend that you and your group members preview your survey. So what I did there is I went up to the icon that looks like an eyeball and I clicked on it and it allows me to look at what this survey would look like for participants. So I have the title, a little bit of a description, the disclaimer, and then for all of the questions that are required, there's a red asterisk, asterisk that is um, included after the question. So I would go through and take this survey, right? Let's say breakfast two times per week, two days per week. Um, yeah, I eat worms for breakfast, great. And then in one sentence, what is the first change you would make to breakfast options made available to you on your university campus? I'd say, uh, TVH, I think our breakfast options are the best. Awesome. Cool. And then for here, I wrote 9 a.m. Great. So I submit this and the response gets recorded. This is a great way for you and your research team to kind of pilot your instrument is what we kind of call it in the research field. Make sure, making sure that your instrument yields the type of results that you're looking for, right? So now if I go back to my original Google Forms, there's a section here that says responses. If I click on responses, here you can see that there's a beautiful um, representation of the responses that my participants gave for each question. So for question number one, and then I could do this just as a general summary, I could do it by question, right? And this shows me individual responses all the way up to the 18 participants. Um, that's what this number here represents, participants. Or I could do it by participant. So this will be the first participant. These are their responses, okay? They chose not to answer this last question because it wasn't created yet. But notice how their answer to this third question that we talked about is very different from what I just wrote. Um, I really like the summary category because it gives you a general depiction, a visual representation of all of your data at once. So here I have four, six, one, three, four participants. All of that should add up to 18, so 10, 11, 14, 18, right? And it even gives me a, number, a percentage of the number of participants for the whole sample so four is 22.2% of 18, and that's how many people said that they eat breakfast, they eat a balanced breakfast five days per week. Interesting. Here I've, and then this is where you get into some like interpretation of your results. So the largest number of um, participants who answered for days of week was two, two days per week, six people said that. Um, Here's where you start to realize the more people you get to take your survey, the more informative your results truly are. Um, here's a pie chart for the second question. I think that these are great visual re representations. So each of these colors um, resembles a different answer. Um, so what I recommend for you and your group for qualitative research is to use a Google Forms if you want to conduct a survey or if you're trying to do the the interview approach. Um, don't disregard these questions because I think answering good questions is a an important thing to consider as you go into conducting qualitative research, but um, consider the types of results that you're looking for. But then also with these visual visual representations, you can just put these into the results section of your paper. And because we have to include two visual aids in the CRP, the Cl Collaborative Research Project, I think this is a great opportunity. Look how beautiful these two visuals would be in my results section to help me explain my data. Now, 
if we go down to those short answer questions I was talking about, look at all of these different responses that my participants have gave or have given. How would I interpret this as a research team? They should add an IHOP instead of Denny's and up, and up the quality of food. How am I going to talk about that one response? A lot more difficult than looking at all of the data at once and saying 33% of my sample said that they eat breakfast two days per week. Interesting. Okay. A um, lot less results for the fourth question because I added it a little bit later. But I think that these are great things for you and your group to consider as you go about creating qualitative research. And if you have any questions about how Google Forms works, just let me know. I'm always available through email. I know I say that repeatedly, but I really want you to feel comfortable coming to me with questions. Um, yeah. And last but not least, there's a way to look at all your data in an Excel spreadsheet just by clicking this. Well, it's, it's a Google Sheets, but let's say I click on that. Now I have a timestamp for each one that was taken back in the fall here, and then um, their answers to each question. So if that's useful for you, I recommend making use of it. You can go about creating data um, representations, um, different charts and stuff like that here on um, Google Sheets. So yeah, that's my introduction to Google Forms and how I think it might be useful for you and your research team in creating a survey. Um, I hope everyone's still doing healthy. I know I said that at the beginning. I'll say it over and over. I'm extremely proud of all of you guys, and I hope to see you soon.